So, Jane, we've had a conversation prior to this recording, and and uh, you uh, have had a spiritual experience, which you label faces. Um, I have that right, do I not? Yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. Why don't you? I mean, you like you started out on the couch or something? I mean, I mean, tell us a story. Sure. I was um, sleeping over at my mother's and, in her den, and so I was sleeping on a pull-out sofa. So you can picture the way I was propped up in bed. I had my back against the back of the sofa and the rest of me was stretched out. I turned the lights out and lit a candle because I was thinking about what I was going to do next. And um, as I looked up from my reflection on the opposite wall was a mirror and I couldn't see myself distinctly, but I could see myself. And then suddenly I just saw a whole river of faces, little children, men, women, old people, all races. It was in all hair colors, all, all facial configurations. And it just stopped me in my tracks. And I had the feeling that I had just slipped into this place where I saw that we're all, it's just one being. And that because of the reflective mood I was in, I got a little peek into that oneness. Okay. I, I've had a similar experience, as you may have read on our mm -hmm. website. It had nothing, yeah. nothing to do with faces. But let me get back a second, just so I understand well. The faces. Did you interpret them as being all your faces? Or this is, they're, they're all blend into one? I mean, I mean I, at, at first, I think I thought I was seeing all the people I've been and will be, but then it it seemed much bigger than that. It was it was like when I was looking at my face, I was looking at everyone in the world's face, and I got to see them for a moment. Okay, and were you having emotions about this? I was I was in awe. I was stunned. Uh huh. Yeah. Okay. I was just kind of. Okay, were you were you stunned because what a weird thing to see is all these all these pictures, or were was there some other feature of this oneness that got your was, attention? Yeah, I wasn't frightened and I wasn't startled. I was in awe. It was and and I was, I think, in a state of bliss. You know, it was just ah. Oh, yeah, okay. that that feeling that. I was in the presence of something I couldn't put into words. Well, the way I put it, and I've talked to many people, you know, that have had these experiences, and the one that I've had, I often describe as I was in the presence of the Creator, and I also describe it as in that state, there was absolutely nothing but love. Now I don't know how far you got into it. But I'm I'm wondering if you can put some words around what this bliss state is. Is that can you do that? I think I can. It it lasted the rest of the night. I had my door shut and I was all alone, and it was like being suspended, being taken out of the world into this just beautiful blissful place, and I was just overwhelmed by this sense of I want to use the word unity. Mm -hmm. And I think my eyes filled, and I just watched. It was a state of rapture. Yes. That's the best word. Yes. Best and, word. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few other questions about you when, sure. you're, when you're in that state. And if it fits, or if you have an answer, great. If you don't, say, I don't know. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, when you're in that state... I mean, if you could, you, that state lasted the rest of the evening, you said, okay. Yeah. Um, if you were in that state permanently, now this is, this is very theoretical, of course, but if you were in that state permanently, you were always in that state, would disease be possible? Well, I can't say for sure, but when you feel in a state of rapture, the body just feels like it works perfectly so I would imagine illness is impossible yeah what about death you're... what, are, what well, about death when I was looking at all my faces I felt like there was no difference between those who were those who are and those who will be you know mm -hmm. there was just this oneness yeah it's... and um, was there any 
time in this experience? No, because I, I think I probably turned the lights out at about nine o'clock and I was sitting and thinking and I lit my candle. And when I, I call it coming to, when I came to, it was about 1130. And it just seemed like that. Yes. Okay. But yeah, you know, we're, we're so used to time in this experience. I mean, there's this, I call it the world within our senses, okay, which is the world we're experiencing yeah. right now. And you're talking mm -hmm. about a world that is beyond our senses if I've got it right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's like, well, I don't know if it words in your mouth, but would this fit? It's like this world um, compared to that world, this world becomes sort of a non-event, sort of a fiction, sort of a, this is my term now, why bother? I mean, I, I don't know if I'd say why bother, but I did feel like the little life, I'd been absorbed in the little life, in my little tiny life, thinking, oh, what am I going to do next? And suddenly this experience said, well, you've got a cosmic life. You don't need to worry about that little no. life. Everything's just fine. Well, that's sort of what I meant by the why bother. I mean, because we get so involved in all of our yeah. all of our problems and our issues and the things we have, our to-do lists and all the things that are, you know, our financial, we've got to pay our bills and all this other stuff that goes on. We get so involved in that. And it's it's almost like, this is my my words again, but it's almost like, all this involvement distracts us from this this more I'm going to call it more realistic experience. Well, those are my words, but you, you say something about that. Shortly after that experience, I moved to Toronto from uh, where I was in Windsor, and um, I had a lot of time, and I read the Bhagavad Gita, and one of the lines that just leapt out at me which reminded me of that experience was do it all but with detachment uh -huh. okay and so when you're in this place of wonder and awe when you have a sense of the authenticness of our spiritual reality then you you can move back and forth between these worlds and not get all wrapped up in you can just remember those words and do it with detachment. Yeah, some people um, will hear some of these comments and they will be concerned because they will say, well, okay, but if I go this direction to, to use your term, this authentic reality, okay, um, then I'm not going to be in this world anymore. And I've got things to do here and responsibilities, et cetera. And so if I go over there, well, I don't, I don't, I don't know about that. It's, but indeed... Well, let me ask you, is it possible to be in both states at the same, you know, in a body and in that state at the same time? Well, I was in a body when I was in that state, so I'm yeah. going to have to answer yes. I think, I think the more we open, and this is at least how it's been for me, I won't speak for other people, the more we open to those kinds of spiritual experiences, the easier it is to live the ordinary little life, because all this glorious loving energy fuels us and so we don't take seriously all this oh i'll give you a brief example if i may i have to teach a course called um global issues in the media and it means i have to do research on all the tragedies that are going on all over the world and when people ask me about that course and i tell them they say how do you stand it aren't you supposed to you know we're not supposed to watch the news. Well, I don't watch the news, but I do do research in all the things that are happening because I have to in order to be a competent teacher. But it's like when, I, when I'm when i immersed in that world, my entire feeling is for all the participants. And I can then present it to my students in such a way as to, I, I hope, inspire them to see a bigger, a more global perspective instead of taking sides and saying this is right this is wrong they're bad mm. we're good which is what the world is doing right now so i would say that these spiritual experiences have made me a far more compassionate and aware and loving person they've made it possible for me to be that way in the face of terrible tragedy almost everybody i've ever met that have had one of these experiences it has, from that point forward, shifted their attitudes about life. 
um, d dramatically. I mean, I, I, one example was was you know I had my spiritual experience in 1988, and I didn't come across EFT until the early 90s. And if I hadn't had that spiritual experience, my way of doing EFT, my first question I would have asked myself is, hey, this is a good thing. Uh, gee, how can I maximize the profit here? You know, that's the American way, the business way, go, go capitalism, sure. you know. But I didn't. Yeah. I didn't. Um, my question I asked myself was, this is a precious thing. How can I get it out to the most people? Much different question. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. it, and so your attitude is dramatically different in all these cases, you know, and and it just it colors it colors everything. But I want to get to something we talked about earlier, and that's your term authentic. And I forgot you said something about the authentic experience, authentic reality. What was the term you used for that experience? You said authentic well, something. I think I said. Uh, I can't be sure, <laughs> but I think it's the way I feel about this is that my little self, my my small kind of small minded blood in the eye self is far less authentic. The, the authentic self is the self that experiences the whole. Yeah. And, and, and that is a yes, that was my experience as well. But let me expand on that some because because if you haven't had this experience, it is I mean, your your only way you can really conclude anything is that the only experience there there is is what your senses tell you. This this world, this little self, as you're putting it, and you have no other choice, um, no. unless you do spiritual experiences and studies and you know try to get beyond it and this kind of stuff. But without that, you're you're in this place, and it's not, it seems like. This place is the authentic place, and everything else is woo woo. I mean, that's how it seems. Yeah. But once you're there, the roles are reversed. That other state is the authentic one, and this one is a not so authentic. Yeah, it's maybe it's better to say the other one is permanent and this one is impermanent. Well, oh, yeah, sure. Well, yeah. this one is impermanent, we die. Yeah, exactly. And so does everything else on Earth, yeah. as far as we know. But in this other realm, my grandmother used to say, I always was, I am, I always will be. And that describes the other realm. Yes. That describes it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. All right. So, so um, I don't have any other questions for you unless you have something you want to you want to add. I I can't think of anything except you said when you had your experience in 1988, your attitude changed from then on. Yes. So what I believe about that from my experience is that this is like being infected by a positive virus. <laughs> and from that moment on, once you've been infected, you can't help but infect other people. <laughs> I, I suppose the psychologist would say affect rather than infect, but it is like an it's like an infectious disease, only it's not a disease, it's an infectious joy. Because you can't be different. Once you've had that kind of experience, you can't go back to being the other person. Well, You're always the person who knows. Yeah, you are who the person you are the person who knows. Um I still find and, and, and comment on this, if you will. I still find that even though I know, because I've been there, I can still get irritated by this world. I can still feel fear and guilt and anger and resentment and da ba 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 all the stuff of this world. The only difference is I recognize when I'm doing it. No, 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 no. But I do do it, just like anybody else. We're stuck in this in a way, right? Well, don't you think that's the value of EFT and Donna Eden's energy medicine? It, it if you if you don't have the support to be hooked up to that world more of the time, it's very challenging. You can't hold on to it because this world, this this little world, is very distracting. It's, it's incredibly powerful. You get hit in the face all the time by things. It's screaming at you. 
but if you do EFT and meditate and go for walks in the woods and be silent, if you do those things, then the then you make room for that other world more of the time. Okay, well, yes, and and thank you. The the, e, the EFT. Let me just comment on that for a moment. Um, sure. Uh, one of the goals of a course in miracles, which happens to be my spiritual path, is we're going to remove mm -hmm. the blocks to the awareness of love's presence. Okay. And an EFT is a delightful tool for that because it can take these angers and resentments and stuff that we've built up over time and in fairly short order with some skills, ah, yeah. you know, we've, we've just yeah. got a lot of them is all, okay? And yeah. there there are deeper levels stills and still, and that's why I'm putting together my optimal EFT for those interested in, in you know, going that that still deeper direction, you know, but that's, mm -hmm. yeah, it's a, it's a ideal tool, you know, for assisting us on that path. So. When I introduce it to students and clients, I say, if you use this every day, it's, it's like having a shower. You wouldn't dream of starting your day and going out into the world without cleaning yourself, without, you know, making sure your clothes are clean and you're just all spruced up. Well, this is even more essential because this is an inner cleaning. It, it yeah. takes care of all the dross that we attract yeah. over the course of our days. So I do it every day. Yeah. It's my, it's my, it's my spiritual cleansing tool, my go-to one. Yes, great. I do meditate and I do do, I do Donna Eden's energy routine every day too. Uh -huh. All right, great. Okay, Jane, I thank you. That was delightful. That's going to be a lot of help for a lot of people. So unless there's any more, we can sign off. Not at all. Thank you so much. It's been a joy. All right, great. All right. Bye. All right.